Milk drip. <gasps> Hey everyone, this is our second episode of Ask Free and Simple. And technically we recorded it first because this is a webinar we did. Yeah, Airstream is hosting a series called Ask an Airstreamer, which is an hour long conversation with Airstreamers about their Airstream journey, some tips and lessons they learned along the way. They're doing a new one every month. So yeah. you should definitely check out Airstream's website so you can sign up to watch the next one when it happens. And uh, this was our session with them. So if you're curious about our journey, what we learned, some of our favorite places we've been, and tips we have for better Airstream life, then check it out. Here you go. for joining us today. Before introducing Jim and Chelsea, I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Chris, and then in addition to being an Airstream owner myself, I get to work with Airstream's brand ambassadors, helping to share stories of adventure, curiosity, and exploration in their Airstream. We created Ask an Airstreamer to help connect owners with others who are curious to learn about what Airstreaming is all about. I remember when I was on my journey to become an Airstreamer a few years ago, I found it really helpful to connect with those already using an Airstream, learn about where they go and what it's like to tow. So this is our second edition of Ask an Airstreamer. We'll have an hour together today. Jim and Chelsea will, sh will share with us how they use their Airstream Globetrotter, where they've been, how they work from the road, and more. We'll stop for questions along the way in, addi in addition to having dedicated Q&A at the end. So before I turn it over to Jim and Chelsea, there are countless ways to use an Airstream Globetrotter. While Jim and Chelsea are going to share how they use theirs, keep in mind that the options are almost limitless. And finally, at the end of today's session, we'll share a promo code for Airstream Supply Company, which is part magazine, part travel guide, and outfitter. So that's it for me. I'll now turn it over to Jim and Chelsea, Airstream ambassadors and Globetrotter owners. Guys, thanks for sharing part of your Saturday with us. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Um, we're excited to be here. And thanks, Chris, for introducing us. Um, welcome to all of you who are curious about the Airstream Globetrotter. I'm Chelsea. Um, a little bit about me is um, that I recently completed my MFA in creative nonfiction writing from Stone Coast University, um, which writing is something I enjoy doing um, in addition to being outdoors as much as possible. And recently, most of my time has been spent nesting as we are preparing for the arrival of um, a baby boy in August. It's like in 10 weeks. <laughs> I'm Jim. Uh, I am a digital minister at the Riverside Church in New York City, which is a job I do remotely because I'm not in New York City right now. Uh, and along with that, I do a couple other online content creation kind of gigs, digital freelancing, digital consulting. Basically, I make videos and podcasts and YouTube videos and all that good stuff. And we have just loved this life of living in an Airstream. However, currently, as you can see, if you're looking at us in the little corner of your screen, we're not in the Airstream right now. We're in an apartment and we'll get into the details on how and why we're here later in the presentation. But our Airstream journey began in New York City. We were living in Manhattan, the busiest, biggest city in America. We'd been there for about two years together. We got married in New York City in Fort Tryon in Inwood. And while we were there, the city had a lot of amazing things, but we always found ourselves just wanting the green space, wanting nature. That meant at times doing whatever we could to get out of the city, to go camping, or just spending all the time we could in the parks in the city. We wanted to be in nature. Um, both of our personalities tend to be more adventurous. Um, we both like to have fun and take risks. Um, and that's kind of how the Airstream came into our journey of camping. Um, but prior to that, um, we both have a history with camping and backpacking. My family went every summer when I was a little kid. Um, I think my first camping trip was like when I was seven months old wow. and I went every year. Um, 
And then I got into some backpacking in college. And when we got together, we got into air streaming. Yeah, I had done some backpacking in college, spent a summer living in a tent in Alaska. But then when we were married and we said, let's get out of the city. And on one of our trips, we were driving to the Catskills. We'd been thinking about what could the chapters after New York City be for us? What might be next? And so we're driving through the Catskills. And I said, Chels, what about an Airstream? And I had never even heard the word Airstream. I didn't have any idea what it was. And we pulled it up on our, I pulled it up on my phone and first of all, loved the look of it. And the next weekend we found ourselves at our local Airstream dealer walking through every single model. <laughs> we went back again and again. And then before we knew it, we decided, yep, this is for us. This is the next chapter. And so we bought a 27 foot 2019 Globetrotter front bed queen. We picked it up in April of 2019. Well, that's when it arrived, but we didn't quite take it out to start full timing until last July, July 2019 is when that Airstream yeah. became home. Yeah, um, that was kind of a natural stopping point for us. Um, one week before we moved full time into the Airstream, I graduated from my master's program and um, we took off running in the Airstream shortly after that. Um, and the, I think the main reason we chose to go with the Globetrotter was that um, we loved the sleek, minimal, clean European design. And to us, it really just felt like a tiny Manhattan apartment on wheels. Only it wasn't stuck in Manhattan. We could take it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, neither one of us had ever towed before. So that was going to be a thing we had to figure out. And we decided, okay, let's learn everything we can before we even get into the Airstream. And we watched all the YouTube videos. You've probably seen a lot of them. Long Long Honeymoon has a great YouTube channel and they have a phenomenal video specifically on backing the Airstream in. Uh, but more than anything, we knew we just needed to get in the driver's seat and try. We're, uh, yeah. we're, we're hands-on learners. Yeah, I think as, as many videos as we watched, we didn't really get the hang of it until we were in the driver's seat. Um, and we both started off towing very slowly. Um, we made and it, we made it a point to tow on Mondays um, so that we could avoid the traffic of a busy weekend. So if you're just starting off and learning how to tow, that might be a good tip for you. Um, try to avoid Fridays and Sundays as much as possible. And then eventually you might end up like me and be go from zero towing experience to the one who does most of the towing. Oh yeah, she, she's the primary tower in our family. Yeah. We made a YouTube video all about that called Tow Like a Girl. So if you wanna see all of Chelsea's behind the scenes towing tips, just look up free and simple and she's amazing. Yeah, and I think the biggest takeaway we have experienced from towing is that it was nowhere near as hard as we thought it would be in the first place and you catch on yes. really quickly. Yes. It's, it's a lot easier than we both thought it would be. Yeah. Now, part of us for towing was we had to tow with something. So we got the Airstream and then we're like, now what do we tow it with? And if you've been on any of the Airstream discussion boards or Facebook groups, you know that whenever you ask what's the best tow vehicle, you are just in for a heated debate in the comments. So we read through all those, but really we leaned on the advice of family and friends who have a lot more towing experience than our no towing experience. And we ended up uh, buying a 2019 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with a Duramax diesel engine, which is a mouthful to say. It is, yeah. We, we didn't know what any of that meant a year and a half ago, but now we're like, yeah, we know what diesel exhaust fluid is and we know where to put it. So we learned a lot. We found a truck that we knew would be the best fit for us because we came into this with no experience and we wanted to be as safe as possible. So that's why we picked the 2500. Yeah, we wanted to be able to go anywhere, um, to go anywhere and feel safe. So um, one of the reasons we went with this particular truck was because it is kind of overkill as some people said. Um, so many people on the first day of our orientation at the Airstream facility said, you aren't going to have any problems with this truck. And uh, we never did. Um, towing through the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina and even parts of West Virginia, where it was very steep grades and hairpin turns, we never once felt like the 
Airstream was pushing us or that the truck was overworked and we always felt in control. The other reason for that was the hitch we picked. There's lots of options for tow vehicles, lots of, lots of options for fit hitches and sway bars and all that. We went with the Pro Pride hitch uh, in our research. It just seemed like the best hitch that we could get, especially for newbies to this world. And we wanted to set ourselves up for the best possible experience. And between the combination of the truck we picked, the hitch we picked, towing the Airstream, which Airstreams never sway much anyway, it was a dream. Two newbies felt like we could take that thing on almost any road yeah. without any problem. It was pretty seamless and there were definitely moments when we're driving and it almost felt like there was nothing behind us. <laughs> were it not for oh, the, yeah. the tow mirrors, it just felt like we were just driving. Cruising along. Yeah. Hey, Jim and Chelsea, quick question here coming in on the, the, the Q&A. This one is around why specifically a, a travel trailer versus a self-contained RV like a, a motor home? Yeah, we, we knew that this was gonna be our full-time home. So we didn't have a car in advance to this to kind of hook up to the back of a motor home. So we were buying it kind of as a combo. And personally for us, we wanted the ability just to have one vehicle we got comfortable driving and then one vehicle that we got comfortable living in. So it just allowed it to be a little simpler on our end. Um, driving a truck seemed like it was less of a learning curve than driving a big motorhome. Yeah, I think we also liked the idea that once we got to our campsite, we could leave the travel trailer at the campsite, settle in and take the truck to the grocery store if we needed to run errands. So it was the idea that we didn't have to pack everything up and, and move every single time. And we just love the Airstream travel trailers. We just really <laughs> wanted one of those more than anything. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Now we picked the Airstream for a lot of reasons, but for us owning an Airstream, well, one thing for me, it meant that I knew we were in uh, a, a place that meant we had a community. Everywhere we went, we wouldn't be alone. Uh, any campground you go to, you feel a connection with other campers, anyone who lives or travels or spends time in an RV, but there's a unique connection that Airstreamers don't have together. We would be in any campground and the minute we saw another airstream across the campground we knew we were going to end up talking to those owners yeah there was just an immediate like oh yeah you you know that, that this is the best one too let's spend a little time together comparing notes catching up on ideas and that was a lot of fun to know that we were always a part of a community everywhere we went yeah and not just the community of a campground but even the community of passing another airstream on the highway or the community of jumping into an Airstream forum. Um, sometimes we felt even more connected in the Airstream community than we ever did in Manhattan. Do you remember the time we were getting gas and a guy ran up to us <laughs> and said, we're about to buy this exact same Airstream next week. Yeah, there's just a real bond between Airstreamers and that's something we valued. Um, another thing that we valued right from the beginning was the quality of an Airstream. Um, for us, because this was going to be our full-time home, we wanted to buy the best to the best uh, travel trailer that we could. And um, the, the number of hours that go into building this, 405 hours to build one, to build our Airstream. Wow. It just felt like we were moving into something that had been cared for and meticulously crafted. And then we wanted it to be our home. We knew that an Airstream was more than just a camper. It wasn't like, you know, the thing my grandparents had for weekend getaways. This was our home. This could be a space that we could customize. We could make it fit who we are. And it would just feel exactly like all the comforts of home we were used to, only we got to have them in any where we wanted to be. Yeah, and I think for us that was one of the best parts of living in the Airstream was that we could travel to any of the beautiful places we wanted to go while still having all of the comforts of home. Like when we were first figuring out which Airstream model was the best fit for us, we actually brought our yoga mats with us to the dealership. We wanted to find one that had enough room for us both to lay out our yoga mats to practice yoga in the morning. And the 27 foot Globetrotter worked great. Yeah, so if you're looking for the same thing, <laughs> then this is a great model. It has tons of floor space in the middle and um, it allowed us to maintain one of the daily morning rituals that we had in Manhattan while we were on the road. And then we also liked the 27 foot 
and the, the whole runway it had, we knew it would feel like home with our cats. We have two cats, Whitman and Wendell, and Wendell you see there by the yoga mat on screen, he brings us these felt balls every morning <laughs> and just waits for us to throw them, and then he runs and brings them back, and he thinks he's a dog and just plays fetch. But we knew that the Airstream would even give him the sense of home he was used to. I guess a, a follow-up on the, the length, uh, and specifically what drew you to the 27. I know that when you bought yours, uh, there weren't as many floor plans and options that there are today, but what, what drew you to the, the 27 versus a, you know, a different size one? Yeah, so when we chose ours, we could choose between the 25 and the 27 foot globe trotter. And um, I think what drew us to it was that the 27 had a little bit more counter space pantry space and closet space yeah and as full timers um uh, that little bit went a long way yeah yeah living full time in it uh meant that we had to think about those t tiny details uh the where where is that extra couple of inches in the closet going to come and how are you going to use it uh and it just created you know a sense of how do we live make this make this our full-time home it took discipline um, planning going out, but being full-time and we got to find all sorts of new places, new restaurants to try, new areas to explore. Uh, and we could just take breaks, living full-time. This wasn't, you know, yeah. let's go on vacation. This was, we're still working, doing jobs online, but the flexibility it gave was so refreshing. Yeah, I think one of the biggest contrasts from city life to Airstream life was that during our lunch break, if when we were camping on Lake Huron, for example, um, we were able to take our Oru kayaks out on the lake um, after lunch for a quick break. And one time we took them out with our morning coffee. <laughs> yeah, or just go for a hike or go for a bike ride or just immerse yourself in nature so that when you do come back to your work, it feels a lot more you feel rejuvenated. If you don't know what Oru kayaks are, by the way, they're these origami folding kayaks, which are amazing because you can just put them in the back of your truck or in the Airstream while you're traveling. You can find them on the Airstream supply company. Uh, they're just so great. Now we learned a lot though, uh, traveling full time. You know, we, would, we went into this having lived prior to this in an apartment in New York where we could call our super if we had a problem. So this meant we were gonna learn all of the things ourselves. We learned how to, you know, um, fix little leaks if there ever was one and, you know, um, grease the zerks on the hitch, uh, how to hitch up the truck and the trailer. Yeah, how to live in a tiny space, dump the sewer. Um, I mean, so much more, basically, we kind of became our own land boards. Yeah, and living yeah. full time, we had to you know, fund our travels. And we'll talk a bit later about exactly the work we did that helped with that. So that's coming up in a few slides. Well, yeah, and one more thing about other lessons we learned full timing is that um, in addition to the practical aspects of full timing, I think two of the biggest lessons we learned beyond that were to just go with the flow and laugh about the mistakes along the way. There will be a learning curve with any new activity, <laughs> yes. especially when you go from no experience to fully immersing yourself in it. And that I think was what really enriched our Airstream journey yeah. was that we really had to learn and practice to just go, go with, with the flow. flow. Yeah. Now our trip took us through 10 states that the, we, we filled full time for nine months. Uh, and we went through 10 states visiting four national parks. We started uh, leaving New York City, picked it up in New Jersey, went to Michigan to see family, made our way down to Myrtle Beach to see family for Christmas, Florida because it's gorgeous and warm, and then back here we are now in Michigan. Um, out of all of the places we went in the Airstream, any national park we visited was by far our favorite oh, yeah. experience. And that's one of the reasons we bought the Airstream in the first place was to immerse ourselves in these breathtaking um, bits of nature. And for us, I think the Smoky Mountains was our favorite place. Of the national parks we hit so far, yeah. yeah. There's a reason why it's the most visited national park in the country. It's breathtaking. 
Now we, we're currently, like we said, here in Michigan uh, because we're expecting a baby. And we were thinking through how exactly do we want to do Airstream life with baby on the way. And we decided we, we really wanted the stability and support of family around as this little one comes into the world. So we made our way to Michigan and here we are uh, just a few miles away from all of our family. Yep. Uh, and we're also eagerly awaiting when we can take baby Keith out on his first Airstream adventures because our list of where we want to go with him is already, you know, we already have them mapped out. Yeah, we, we actually do. I think now that we've been in an apartment, um, we're just dreaming about all of those future trips. And um, I mean, we'll start out slow with baby Keith, but then we really dream of heading to the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. and Banff. Um, we, and yeah. Michigan alone has a lot of great things to see. You know, it's a yeah. great state covered with water on three sides, peninsula, and we're going to see everything we can see here with this baby and an Airstream. And that's what's great. We always know how we can see the country, see our area, because an Airstream makes that so easy to do and so possible, even as our family grows. So in this second half of our conversation, we're really going to kind of focus in on some of the lessons we've learned, some more of the tips and tricks and tactics that we kind of fell into along the way, talking about how do we plan our trips? How do we stay connected? How do we work from an Airstream? Yeah, what types of gear do we need? Um, what cooking tips do we have? What was it like to travel with pets? Um, did we make any adaptations to the Airstream? And lastly, one of the most um, frequent questions that we get asked is, how do you receive mail when you mm. full time? Or, or just when you're on the road? So first, trip planning. We would try to keep it simple. Our whole mentality was free and simple, so let's make our trip planning as simple as possible. And we would just look at Google Maps and figure out where do we want to go? What part of the country do we want to see? Where are the national parks? And then we look at our weather map to say, when is it best to go there? When is it going to be just the best experience? And then we would kind of figure out the way from here to there and map out a lot of little stops between the way. We would typically plan like, four to six months in advance. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which not everyone does. <laughs> we are very big planners. And that I think is really a result of full-time Airstreaming because we wanted to be able to focus on our work and then not have to think about, okay, where are we going this weekend or next weekend? And mapping it all out in advance just helped us be more present with our work and then the places we were in um, as well. So. And, and we learned it, it was really easy to change our reservations at the last minute, but it sometimes was hard to make reservations at the last minute. And we would always be looking for places that primarily allowed us to have full hookups because this was our full-time home. And I don't know about you, but it's kind of nice to be able to flush the toilet and take a shower in your home. So we wanted that to be a part of it as well. Yeah, definitely. But in order to travel, we really wanted to be able to soak everything in and not be stressed out or exhausted. So we kind of had a, a kind of rule of thumb that we adopted for how we traveled. Uh, and you may have heard of something like this, but for us, we called it the 432 rule. Yeah, so um, this was a rhythm. Okay, so the, the 432 rule is four hours of towing or less that we would arrive at each campsite by three o'clock and that we would stay in one location for at least two weeks. Um, and this is a rhythm of travel that we kind of fell into or established months into our full-time journey. Yeah. Um, so it took us a while to find out what pace we like to move at. How far we want to travel in one take. Yeah. Um, so that was, we, we quickly realized that four hours of towing was our max for the day. Um, some people like to tow eight to 12 hours a day, and that's great. Um, we got real crazy after <laughs> four hours. So did, so, the, so did the cats. So basically how we plan our journey then with the Google Maps, we basically piece out how many stops we need from our current point to the destination we want to go, and we'll break it up with usually the three hours of road time on Google Maps equates to about four hours of towing time. With breaks. With breaks, and we tow at 60 miles an hour, so. And staying for two weeks, for a while we were staying one week at a time for about eight weeks in a row, but living full-time and working full-time, we really yeah. found that staying two weeks made it 
so that we had a weekend. We weren't always traveling every Monday. We had the ability to find some of our favorite places in these small towns along the way and then visit them a second or third time. It became less about the big destination at the end and more about just enjoying all these hidden gems along the way. Definitely. Um, so from the moment we set out on our Airstream journey in July, we had some adaptations that we wanted to make to make our Airstream feel like our home. Um, and two of those modifications were interior design elements, um, which I had fun with. And uh, we actually removed the TV that was in the living room sitting area and we were able to hang then um, a piece of art or in this picture a beautiful hand woven tapestry that made it feel more like home to us. Um, and pro tip for the Globetrotter it meant that it kind of covered those inlets in the back so we could yeah. use those to store some things That's and it was just point. like we had books in there yeah yeah no wasted space it was great yeah and then in the bedroom we also hung um, a hand woven um, tapestry as well. So. We, we got rid of the microwave. We wanted the extra pantry space to be useful for spices and other things we needed to store. We took out the DVD player because we were just going to have an Apple TV hooked up to the TV in the bedroom so we could stream everything. And that meant there was more space in the overhead cabinet for me to store the tech gear I actually needed. And then we got the bike rack, which uh, is designed specifically for an Airstream so that we could have our bikes with us everywhere we went meaning we could just bike to a local store or bike around to the beach or the places we were visiting. Yeah, the bike rack was great. We had, we got that from Airstream Supply Company as well and um, highly recommend the bike rack because it, it did mean, you, we did, well, for in our case, we didn't have to drive a huge, <laughs> loud diesel truck into or town. Or park the loud, big diesel truck in, in town. In a small town, yeah. So the bike rack was great. You guys, a couple of questions about uh, kind of storage and, and the vehicle. Uh, on the back of your pickup truck, do you guys have a cover on it? What do you use for gear gear storage to for the bed there? Yeah, so we ended up adding on to that as we went. When we bought it, it just had, you know, a bed liner and that was it and then a cover for the bed. But then along the way, we had our eye on some things that would really make it work even better for full-time living to access the thing. So we got the decked drawer system installed and uh, my brother-in-law and I installed it, which was a lot of fun. Uh, he did most of the installing. <laughs> I, I just gave moral support, but that meant I could pull out two big drawers, things were secure. I could have tools and gear and a grease gun. And I had like my drone tucked away in there. And then we got a truck cap put on too, which just meant we had a little more vertical space to store things. So it basically turned it into a really usable space for the things we needed to keep long term as we were traveling, but still have space to throw groceries in the bed of the truck, knowing that they were going to give us all the space we needed. So highly recommend customizing it to fit your need. Yeah, the deck is just really cool. Yeah, we also ended up with the truck cap as well. Um, it was the best way to fit the Oru kayaks. Um, oh, with the deck system we needed. Yeah, it was a yeah, but um, I mean the truck cap allowed us to fit all of our gear and still have space. Yeah. We, I think inside and, and in the truck, inside the Airstream and inside the truck, we never were once cramped for space. Um, and it never felt messy or chaotic no, either. No, it didn't. And then one, a uh, couple questions around, uh, specifically around the hooking up at a campsite. So do you use a surge protector and a water filter when you go to a, a full hook? Full hookup campsite. Yes. Yes, always, every time. Yeah, we got the pretty much what we what we saw. It looked like the best surge protector because we wanted we knew we were using computers and electronic gear, and we wanted to make sure the whole airstream was safe. So we got a good surge protector, and yeah, always the the I think just the Camco water filters, but we would change those out every couple of months. Yeah. And then the one other one here, similar to kind of hookups and things like that. So the distinction, and this is a kind of a validation question. The distinction between going to a full hookup campsite versus boondocking is full hookup campsite, you can basically have limitless water and not have to worry about emptying the tanks and always be connected to power versus the other scenario where you're in the middle of the you know, national forest somewhere and you're watching your resources and you know monitoring all that. Yeah. Which both are great experiences. We did two weeks of Lake Huron with electric only. And we had to watch our resources, but we got to be right on Lake Huron every morning. And we 
never did any more campsites with electric <laughs> only after that. <laughs> and I, I mean, I think for us in full-time life, that just meant we had to like walk our dishes up to the main um, bathhouse to wash them. And it just takes a lot more time to not have full hookups when it is your full home, like when it's your full-time home. But so yes, we loved full hookups. Um, we hope to try boondocking in the future when we are part-time, when we start part-time air streaming, but we are, we are gluttons for full hookups. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Awesome. And, and the water pressure is nice too, to have a good, nice water pressure yeah. shower with the full hookup. So yeah. yeah, little things make it feel like home though. That's what we wanted. Yes. Now for us traveling full time, we knew we would need to stay connected. So uh, the Airstream we knew was a great choice for that. We uh, figured out how are we going to be on the internet? We saw that Airstream had come out with Airstream connected and they began rolling it out in all the new models as an option. So we immediately told our dealer, yes, we would like that. So it meant they installed the, the receiver right on the roof. They put, did all the drilling to make it hooked in. And then all we did was have to activate our account and manage it all through the app. And it just gave us internet everywhere we went. Yeah, maybe you can say something quick about how Airstream Connected like functioned or boosted the Wi-Fi in different. Yeah, yeah it, it just made it easy because the, the in antenna was external then. So it could just always get a good signal. And I just learned you can even put any SIM card into the Airstream Connected yeah. thing. So you can swap out your networks. So our, really our, ours came with AT&T internet, which was great. Our cell phone plan is Verizon. So we had a hotspot with that, which was great. And our truck had Sprint Wi-Fi. So we were always covered everywhere we went to stay connected, uh, which given the work that I specifically do, I knew we would need because I needed to be able to upload videos, download content, get on video calls. And so at times when we're traveling, I would glance at, you know, apps like Campendium or the coverage app, the little icon in the top corner there is for the coverage app, which let me just check the cell phone stability and signal at the different places we would be. And we could always kind of pick a place that we knew would at least give me a good signal to make sure we could stay connected even when we traveled anywhere in the country. Yeah. Yeah, staying connected was really important to us. Um, and one of the ways that we were intentional about staying connected was planning our route to specifically meet up with friends and family members. Um, and that is a huge perk of a travel trailer or an RV for us was that we could go wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted, and it really allowed us to connect with people we hadn't seen in a very long time. And then it was a lot of fun because we got to connect with people that we didn't even know until this point. Uh, we made a lot of YouTube videos. One of them was we wrote a song about living in an Airstream. And then we decided to reach out to friends on Instagram and YouTube and say, hey, you live in an Airstream. You want to help make this song with us? And it was really fun to just connect with so many people through these online platforms and to make something together. We always felt such a connection to everyone because of the way the internet let us stay connected and then our travel let us physically see them in person along the way as well. Yeah. You can watch this whole video, by the way, on our YouTube channel. Just look up Free and Simple, and this one's called We Live in an Airstream. Maybe we're biased, but we think it's kind of fun, and it'll probably get stuck in your head. It was a very fun experience, <laughs> for sure. Now, we worked from the road full-time. We had to do things to support this life. We were not retired in our 30s. Uh, and I personally have a variety of remote work that I do. And I had a couple remote gigs going into this, uh, but I have a full-time job, like I said, at a church in New York City. And I pitched them, I said, hey, here's how I think my job could be remote. And they said, yeah, we think that can work. So we found ways to take all of the remote work I did and have that support this nomadic full-time life. But it didn't just happen overnight. I spent years connecting with different organizations to have a portfolio of remote work that made it possible for us to yeah. take the leap and live full-time traveling on the road. Yeah, for me, I kind of came at remote work from a totally different standpoint. Um, I had been working as a nanny um, in New York City while I was completing my MFA. And when we started our Airstream journey, I didn't know what I would do for work on the road. Um, so for me, I just um, asked myself what I enjoyed doing and what I was good at. And for me, that was writing. And I ended up finding a job as an online writing coach. So I think even if you don't have 
a decade's worth of background and experience <laughs> and building up to this point, um, there is still a lot of remote work you can do to fund part-time or full-time travel on the road. And then, you know, with the work I did specifically, a lot of it was with digital media. So I always had basically a whole recording studio with me, a whole video setup, yeah. cameras, drones. Uh, I had to keep that gear safe and protected and living full time, our entire life was with us. So we did a couple things to really keep our full time work life safe and secure. Some of you might be you know, photographers, video editors who think similarly. Uh, our truck with the deck drawer system was where we kept a lot of the gear. So I knew a lot of it was secure in the truck. So if we ever went someplace away from the Airstream, chances are the gear was right there with me and I could always see where the truck was on the app on my phone. Yeah. But then in the Airstream would be other gear, our laptops, my camera was in there. And we had a Nest Cam that we had back in our New York apartment and we brought it with us to the Airstream to set up so we could always just see what was happening. And really we did it so we could see our cats when we were away from the Airstream to make sure they were safe. But it also gave us peace of mind to know it's that true. our Airstream was safe. It would give us a notification if yeah. anything was happening in the Airstream so we felt safe and secure. Yeah, one other piece of technology that um, we also really enjoyed using for traveling with pets um, was a temp stick. And that allowed us to check the temperature and humidity in our Airstream from the road. Um, so we could always know that our, our pets weren't overheating, were the power to have gone out or something like that. So I would recommend that if you're traveling with a pet. Um, and we traveled with cats. A lot of yes. people travel with dogs, which is yeah. a fairly common RV companion, but we were the cat owners. <laughs> uh, and as you can see, they, I think, really loved full-time Airstream life. They, they grew to okay, love full-time okay. Airstream life. It was a rocky start. Yeah. Um, it was a new place, but they got to know it as their home. Yes. Whitman there on the left, he loved going outside. We have a harness and a leash and he would stand by the door giving this long pitiful meow <laughs> and we would take him outside and he would roam around and whenever he would get spooked he would just dart right back to the door. Yeah. Even in a new campground he knew where his home was. Yeah. Um, other tips for traveling with a pet. Um, make sure you're stocking up on any pet medications in advance um, so that you have those. For us we stocked up months out. Um, so that we would never have to worry about how we got those on the road. Chewy.com is an easy way to order pet yeah. meds and pet food and have it delivered to you. We'll talk about mail in a second. Yeah. But it made it super easy for our vet to even give us prescription things through Chewy.com to come right to us wherever we were. Yeah, and then I think it's just also important to remember that it's an adjustment and um, it will take time. Um, for us, for the cats, I think it took about five or six towing trips. And then we started giving them calming medications. And then we started enjoying our, <laughs> our trips together. So. They would even purr in the back seat while they were traveling. So it can be done. You guys, a couple of uh, questions here. First one's on pets and then uh, next two are specifically about work and connectivity. With, with the cats, where do you keep litter box? How do you guys manage that in the Club Trotter? Great yeah. question. So we ended up keeping the litter box underneath the bed. You know, the under, underside of the bed, you can lift it up if you need. It has this kind of side entrance access. So we had a litter box that just went under, I think, my side of the bed. Yep. Uh, so that meant once in a while I would step on to dry litter, which just reminded me to change the litter and vacuum it. We just vacuumed yeah. every, every day. And we even actually uh, drilled in a, a piece of wood to kind of separate that section from the other areas so it would kind of keep litter contained but it really yeah. did a great job of keeping litter in one spot there was never an odor problem uh, so that was a really easy simple fix awesome uh, next one is about working and talk a little bit about where and how you work either in or outside of the airstream ergonomics and where you you, you both spend time or, or separate uh, to have privacy if you're both on calls or recording, things like that. Yeah, I think our rhythm that we fell into was one person would be outside and one person was inside. Um, that way we each had our own spaces and um, if Jim was taking a call, it wouldn't distract me from my editing. Um, and so then we would swap maybe halfway through the day and we bought super comfy chairs. We had um, anti the zero gravity chairs, which 
made sitting and reclining very comfortable. We had a, uh, uh, Chelsea had a pair of Bose noise canceling headphones yes. just in case she did need them if we were both inside and I was yeah. talking or doing something a little louder than silence. But I would spend almost every morning, I would make a pot of coffee and sit uh, on kind of the door side seat of the dinette. And that kind of became my usual spot to just be right there in the morning working with the sunrise. And then I'd probably make my way outside like you see in the photo there. I'd set up my whole recording gear outside on a picnic table and just had a lot of fun being on video calls and making content anywhere we went. Yeah. And then a lot of, a lot of questions or a discussion around Airstream Connected and really around does it do new airstreams come with it is it how do, how do you get it so i can i can take that one and um and share that all okay. airstream travel trailers um, made starting in 2020 have the pre-wire for the antennas in the roof so it makes the installation at your local dealer a lot easier so um, even if you don't have that model it's still pretty easy to to put it in uh, so can just to share that that bit of information with folks as well. And the, really the perk we knew of Airstream Connected along with everything we've been saying is that camera was always connected because it was mm. just de by default connected to our Airstream Wi-Fi. We had you know, a, a, an Amazon smart speaker so we could always ask what's the weather or add things to our shopping list because that was always connected. And it was just nice to have, to know that internet was gonna be built into our house just like it is in our normal apartment. Yeah. Awesome. So we've talked a little bit about um, how we stay connected on the road, um, what's it like to travel with a pet, and now we wanted to talk about some of the must-have gear oh, yeah. that you need, we you use need some to gear. travel. Yeah, there's some of that. Yeah, the, the top left picture is a picture of um, all of the gear we bulk ordered <laughs> from Airstream <laughs> Supply Company and then a few things from Amazon as well. Um, before we set out on our first trip. We would watch all the YouTube videos. You've probably seen all the RV and Airstream YouTubers and they often give their list of the most essential gear. And it was really helpful to look to people who've been doing this yeah. full time longer than we ever had and to say, okay, what don't we know exists that we're gonna need? And we would watch it, we would add it to a wish list or a shopping cart, and then we would have it show up. Uh, long, long honeymoon had a great list of all sorts of things, and uh, we would even add more things as we went. Uh, some of my favorites, I love the the sewer hose support thing because I just liked having my sewer hose and all my cords and, and <laughs> cables nice and neat on the airstream. And I would secretly judge everyone who had a messy sewer hose <laughs> and power cord setup. You know who you are. Um, we used Lynx levelers religiously every time we went to a campground. Those are great for leveling out. Um, and we found out seven months into our Airstream journey that they also make little half size oh, yeah. links levelers if you're just off like a little bit. So you're like levelers on the, the Airstream. Yeah. yeah. So links levelers we use every single time. We were collecting gear as we went because we yes. would just learn more. What do we need? Oh, let's get that. And we just had this. Yeah. You know, my, my tool collection started with like a screwdriver and a hammer, and then it grew to like a drill and a grease gun and all sorts of things you can do to lubricate all the crevices and joints and yeah i would say one one of the most helpful things for us was watching dozens of videos of what um seasoned experienced air streamers recommend and then you can kind of build your own list from that point to see what you you will need and then when we needed to know what do we need specifically for an airstream like okay we need to tighten the lug nuts on the airstream tires Torque. torque them yeah <laughs> to make sure that 110 psi because that's what our manual says how PSI? do i yeah pounds per square inch hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're still learning <laughs> so i was like what what torque wrench do i need I went to Airstream Supply Company because I knew everything there was going to be specific for an Airstream so I could get the tire changing kit and it came in a nice case and all this stuff. It was just nice to know that there was, uh, you know, all the YouTubers, but also Airstream Supply Company for a go-to place to find all the specific things for an Airstream. Yeah. Hey, quick, quick question on, on leveling, a, a follow-up here. How, how easy is it to level? I'm sure the first time you did it may be a little bit daunting, but uh, when you pull into a campground now and you need to do it, Walk, walk us through what that's like. Wow, I mean, compared to the first time we did it to the very last, really, really quick. 
Um, leveling way easier than backing in for us yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So we, in our, in the song we wrote about living in an airstream, we wrote a verse that says level unhitch and stabilize. It only took us seven tries. And that's like based <laughs> off of our real firsthand experience of the first time we tried to do that it took us seven or eight or nine tries. But leveling was really simple. We would yes. just get the thing backed in. We had a big, you know, three foot level that we bought a month or two into air streaming because we realized that was really helpful <laughs> to have the big ones, not just the little ones. Yeah. And we would just drop that in the back of the airstream, make sure we would level left to right. If we weren't, pull forward, throw a couple links levelers, back it right up. And um, we preferred using our cell phones as that communication. Um, when we were backing in and all those things. So I would, I would just tell Jim, all right, back up slowly. Um, okay, a little more. And I would just center him on the links levelers. And um, it took 30 seconds or less to level. Um, and then you unhitch. Stabilize. And then you crack a beer. level front to back, oh, yeah, and that. then you stabilize, and then you crack a beer. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> the order, right? It's on all the manual, I think. I don't know. And for us, there was some gear just to make, once we arrived at our new campground, to make it feel like home. So the photo shows some of it. You know, we had these outdoor lights we would hang to make it just feel like a cozy space. Uh, like we mentioned, some comfy campy, camping chairs just to make sitting outside, whether it was relaxing, campfire, yeah. working, to feel really comfortable. Um, an outdoor mat was nice, so we weren't tracking dirt or sand in. That really cut down on the amount of vacuuming we had to do. Um, and then the biggest thing is organizational bins. Um, buy bins to organize your kitchen, your bathroom, your clothes. Um, your, your tech gear, if those you like were, me. Those were the most helpful item I think we bought for yeah. the Airstream. That way things didn't get lost in the back of a deep closet or pantry. Things had a little more structure and organization. Exactly. And then if you're traveling places like Florida or anywhere where it's humid, dehumidifiers are really helpful, whether they're the small ones you hang in the closet, which do really well for those spaces, or other dehumidifiers as well. Uh, but, uh, this, this next question was framed as, hope it's not too personal, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you guys are, are packing and carrying clothes and, and wardrobe, how, how much clothing are you taking with you? How many changes of clothes? Any, any insight you guys can share on that? Yeah, um, we, well, we, are tried to be as minimal as possible and we really downsized 60 to 70 percent of our wardrobe before we moved in which I was already say. a pretty minimal wardrobe but we knew we had to keep it simple um we were thinking through where are we going to be in the different seasons so we had some warmer gear just because we weren't getting rid of like you know jeans and long sleeve jackets and things but we wore more things for warm weather but yeah i'd say yeah, I mean, we had we each had one one warm jacket, one rain jacket, maybe two sweatshirts, a couple pairs of jeans. We didn't, we weren't excessive. We couldn't be. Yeah. But we never didn't have something we needed. I think that's one thing we liked is it forced us to be minimalistic in what we did. It, it was no longer I'm yeah. an aspiring minimalist. I would love to have a simpler life. It's like okay, there are some serious constraints called space in the cl closet in the storage of how much I can actually have and we loved that like we would s we simplify for fun yeah like we love the minimal minimalistic <laughs> nature of that and then one quick follow-up on planning you mentioned that you're planning you know months four to six months in advance I assume that's a rolling four to six months so you're always four to six months ahead Is that right? yeah um yeah we would we would kind of just make sure we had a long stretch going out and then every few months we would kind of look at the next route or we'd always have an idea of where are the places we hope to go or you know whether it's specific reasons like being near family for christmas okay how are we going to get there so we would kind of have these kind of uh kind of hinges that said this is a reason and a, to be there and then just plan our way and uh, do the same for the next kind of bout after that so probably by November, we were planning already, you know, January, February, March, April, and we kind of just always looked ahead. Yeah. We had a big document. I kept a big spreadsheet that kept track of all the campgrounds we were at, how, how much it cost, how far it was, so we could just have a constant yeah. source to look at it all. That was, you, that was helpful. Do you have a, there's a question that came in uh, on, the, on the budgeting side of things. Do you have a sense of 
of how much you budget for expenses while you're on the road, not including you know, insurance and Airstream payment if you finance it, stuff like that. You have a, a sense of that? Yeah, and so that, that's where we we came into this maybe not with the same kind of, with a different approach than maybe someone who might come into this. We were leaving New York City. We were living in Manhattan. So we were used to Manhattan rent. So for us, as long as we came in lower than our Manhattan rent, we felt like we were winning when it came to our <laughs> budget and our finances. So, and luckily we were able to work full time with jobs we did in the city that I did in the city and bring those with us. So it gave us a certain flexibility where we had the luxury to stay at full hookups. And, but really we also loved, you know, staying for a month at a place to be like, yes, 35 bucks a night. That's the deal I want. But we would kind of have a general sense of what our budget was with those kind of constraints. Yeah, I think too, the budget varied greatly depending on which part of the country we were oh, yeah. in. Um, it, is really expensive to be in Florida in the winter time <laughs> yeah. and any budget that we would have had was totally blown out of proportion whereas when we were in Tennessee and um, like uh, Georgia North Carolina, North Carolina yeah. in November and in, in, in like November October we were getting some really cheap campsites. So it just depends on the time of the year and the part of the country you're in too, I think. And we would kind of even think, okay, we can't do the crazy, most luxurious, must have spots all the time, but let's yeah. do those some of the time. Let's give ourselves yeah. a treat. And then let's also find the beauty in that small town, local private campground and uh, discover what's there. Yeah. How do you guys do laundry on the road? Um, we always use whatever laundry facility the campgrounds we were staying at had. Um, I think one of, some of the state parks we went to didn't have laundry and then we just um, would bike our laundry into town or drive it into town and use a laundromat. But laundry was super easy on the road. Um, occasionally, if we could at our campsite, we liked to hang it out on a drying rack. Um, if the campground didn't allow that then we would just use the dryer but there was never a problem yeah super easy great and you have to eat in an airstream so the best thing about taking your home everywhere is you have your home kitchen everywhere yeah which meant we were eating all the meals we would ever want to cook in our home kitchen we had all our pots and pans they all fit in the drawer underneath the sink which was amazing and we could cook pretty much anything yeah i mean we had our blender and yeah vitamix blender to make smoothies in the morning i mean we we were able to bring everything in the kitchen that we needed in new york um and i think that cooking in an airstream was almost very similar to cooking in a small manhattan apartment <laughs> counter space you know it's small but it's more than adequate yeah. to prep everything you need one thing we learned is you know we had to make sure we stay on top of dishes because otherwise that could pile up so you just got to plan ahead for things your fridge space is smaller than you might be used to in an apartment so you got to plan ahead for what items do you need for certain meals but that was fun to get to think what do we want for dinner this week all right let's make a list let's get those things yeah. and look forward to some delicious home cooked dinners right there in our airstream. Um, one cookbook that made it kind of really easy for us to cook quickly and minimally in the airstream was a minimalist baker. And that is a cookbook that utilizes 10 ingredients or less and usually just one bowl. So um, we use that all the time and we, it was delicious, but quick and simple cleanup. And we still use it in the apartment right now. Yeah. Now, one last point to touch on before more Q&A that you've been putting in, uh, getting mail. This was always a thing that people were, we were thinking through, how are we going to get mail? How are we going to register, you know, insurance and all this kind of a stuff? And where do you live when you don't live in one fixed location? Yeah. So we looked up a ton of resources, how is the best way to do this? And similar to towing anything, we'd never done this before. So we stumbled upon um, a group called Escapees, Escapees RV Club. And, and that's just what we went with. It was a really simple service, especially their mail forwarding service. Our mailing address is through them. So you, we could just list that whenever we needed um, our permanent mailing address. If we needed anything shipped, we could always have it shipped to them, any mail to them. And then we would get an email from them every time mail arrives. So they would to say their to their facility. Yeah. So all the mail goes there, a magazine, a 
whatever. Any packages we order that we want to go there, anything you can ship there. And then they email us and say, you've got mail. They don't actually say that. They should say that. And then I'll go to their website. I would look at it and they scan the envelope so I can see kind of who it's from. And then I get three choices. I can ask, have them shred it. Nope, junk mail. I don't need this. I can have them scan the contents. Ooh, I need to read this right away. Or I can have them send it to me in my next mailing shipment. And I can choose any time I want them to ship us whatever items we have. I can choose to have it shipped anywhere I want. So when we're planning, oh, we're going to be at this campsite for two weeks. I'm going to have them ship my mail on Tuesday, so I'll have it by Friday, anything. It made it always easy to know that wherever we were, mail was never going to be an issue. No. For people who pay you with a check, use that same service to have them manage that and get, get the check to you if you need to deposit it. Yeah, so we do a lot of direct deposit, but in the situation where some sort of work was coming in that was being paid by check, it can go to them as well. That actually happened a couple times. Um, the check goes right to them, and then we get the notification. You just got to, you know, say, send that one to me, and then they send it to you, and you get it in your mail. You have to scan it with your phone, and you deposit it in your bank account. So super simple, really easy and intuitive, and made a potentially stressful part of full-time travel life really simple. Yeah. Is there, uh, just going through some of the questions here in the Q&A, was there something that you feared either initially or even before you, you got into Airstreaming that now you look back at and say, no big deal? Hmm. Probably towing was one part of that. Yeah, towing. Or maybe backing in specifically. Backing in. But I would say, yeah. I, I'm not quite to the point where I'd say no big deal but I'm not at the point where I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to do this next one. Can I get it my <laughs> first try? Am I gonna intuitively know when to turn the wheel? It, it was definitely a fear and it became more of a fun challenge every time. Yeah, I think, I think we had a lot of fears and questions before we moved in because we had never done any <laughs> of this before. But yeah, towing and backing in were probably at the top of our list. And now when we look back at it, we're like, Any, anyone can do that. If we can do that, you can do yeah. that for <laughs> sure. So. Uh, some questions here, just talking about uh, your experience with the Airstream after you bought it. Any issues around quality or things breaking or you know, not being able to get the support that you need after you, after you took it home? Quality was impeccable. I mean, that's really why we picked an Airstream because we knew they have a reputation for that. And were there the situation for anything to arise, we knew that Airstream dealers provide incredible support and Airstream itself will always be there to support you to make sure that their quality product stays that way. Yeah. Um, so we, we loved just having that safety of the security of mind. And yeah, there was never anything that um, if it was like, oh, we need to tighten that screw because we're literally an earthquake every time we move, it was so easy to do and simple to do any of those kinds of routine maintenance pieces uh, and to know we had the support with the best quality product everywhere we went. Yeah, we didn't have any major malfunctions or anything break with the Airstream and we never once used our warranty. So yeah, yeah we, we had a great experience. Can you talk a little bit, you, you did some upgrades uh, with specifically to the batteries. Can you talk a little bit about that and then some questions coming in on solar and, and how that works for you guys? Yeah, so ours came with um, a variety of things we had upgraded on it. We had the, the two AC units, uh, we had the full awning package, the electric awning, which was incredible to literally push a button and have your awning go out or in whenever you needed it. And then we had solar added as well. Uh, which, like we said, we never really boondocked, so we didn't really utilize solar for that purpose. But our dealer told us, and we realized, oh, this is the, a great reason to get it. Upgrading to solar meant we upgraded to the lithium batteries. Yeah. Uh, and as newbies, we're like, batteries are batteries, right? Mm -hmm. Apparently not. The standard batteries, you know, you have to check the water levels or something like that. With the solar upgrade, the lithium batteries meant we never had to do that. So we knew our batteries were good to go, sealed, ready to give us the power we needed wherever we were. So that, that was definitely an upgrade we appreciated having everywhere we went and knowing we had the option to boondock someplace and charge off of the solar panels just was another kind of peace of mind and like, yeah, our home can literally go anywhere. This is amazing. Yeah, I think that's what we're really 
another thing we're looking forward to is getting into some boondocking and some some more remote camping. Bring it on. We're ready now. <laughs> <laughs> there are some questions that came in specifically to that one around length and you know, some of the older campsites in national parks were built many many years ago so they tended to be smaller. I can speak personally from my experience I have a, a 27 foot international and there are some camp spots that are super compact and you know more meant for a car but either by calling the the camp host or the park ranger or the you know the park itself to understand and say hey this is the type of vehicle I have this these are the dimensions I found really good luck with that. Uh, there are also some um, campsite review websites and apps that help kind of bring that information to life. Similar experience to you guys, and this is kind of our wrap up uh, here, but in terms of the length of your 27, have you had any issues uh, being able to go anywhere? Um, we could go no. everywhere we wanted. It was yeah. a great length, maneuverable, easy to back in. Uh, maybe there was one spot in Florida we had to kind of like park the truck at an angle to make it fit in our campsite, which was no problem at all, but it was the perfect size to give us everything we needed from home yeah. and yet still small enough to make our home fit anywhere we wanted it. Yeah, and I think that's the perk of planning in advance as well as they know how big your unit is and they'll give you a site to accommodate that size, so. Yeah, 27 never seemed to be a problem. If we had like no. 30, maybe it would have been different. You know, those things with slide outs, oof, good luck. But an Airstream, nice and small and simple, can yeah. pretty much fit anywhere. Awesome. I really want to thank uh, both of you for your time today. For the people that we didn't have a chance to answer their questions, you can send us an email at hello at airstream.com, that's H-E-L-L-O at airstream.com, and we can just respond directly to those. And you know, thank you again for spending part of your Saturday with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Thanks guys. Did you wash your hands after you came in from the truck? I did, that's what I did over there. You did? Yeah.